good morning, everybody, and I'd like to uh, thank Roxby Media and uh, the ACBC for inviting us to um, give this presentation. Um, I guess we're moving along to uh, the morning tea time, and I want to hold you up from that important event, so I will be brief. Um, I represent uh, a body called DEC International. As um, was mentioned, we are actually a, um, we, it's one of the curiosities of our departmental title that it doesn't mean anything much. Uh, we actually um, are a um, coordinating central unit for um, TAFE New South Wales Institutes and New South Wales Government Schools, which you'd be um, hard pressed to guess from our name, but the name derives from the new Department of Education, which is, used to be called the Department of Education and Training, but is now called the Department of Education and Communities. That's state government for you. Um, we, so we are a central government department. We provide strategic advice and coordinate business activities across New South Wales government schools and TAFE New South Wales. Our um, roles include a recruitment and support of international students for both schools and TAFE institutes. We organize study tours and international delegations, and we um, manage and coordinate international projects in a whole lot of countries across the globe. Uh, here's the obligatory uh, slide on statistics, which my colleagues have already uh, uh, done. Uh, I think this is a slightly different perspective, I guess. It gives you a snapshot of Chinese students and um, students from China in 2011. So you'll see it's a very large cohort of international students from China that we have in um, Australia as of last year, uh, 160,000 student enrollments. Uh, all together last year, and that, I think, if you look at all the countries that we get international students from, is um, ranks China as by far the largest uh, source country of international students. Again, within that, uh, within that cohort, the largest number is uh, for higher education, followed by um, the VET sector, followed by the school sector, leaving aside, of course, the English language center, which always has a large number of Chinese students. Um, students from China have been coming here to Australia to study for a very long time, I think going back to um, the 1960s and so on, but of course uh, since the 1990s and the full fee paying student program there's been a huge expansion of students. Uh, we have students who are here on a full fee paying basis uh, as exchange students and on scholarships such as scholarships provided by OSAID and the Department of Education uh, Workplace and Training. I think it was mentioned earlier by uh, Jim uh, that um, the international student area, while it has been a kind of easy inflow of students and easy, a relatively easy uh, mechanism for export, as we call it, uh, in recent times um, this has been um, the trend has been uh, downwards. Um, not only for China, but for many other countries. But China being the largest source, it, this is a, a trend of some concern. Um, and um, obviously, I think some of the um, uh, the, the interest that uh, Frank mentioned, for example, uh, of offering courses uh, offshore in China, is something that TAFE New South Wales and New South Wales government schools are increasingly looking at to offset uh, or, or combat this trend. Obviously, the trend uh, is caused by a number of different factors, such as the value of the Australian dollar. Uh, and recent changes to the student visa regulations and uh, even to uh, migration issues. Uh, just a, a bit more on the engagement of TAFE and government schools with China. Uh, uh, we have a number of commercial activities such as the student, uh, international student side. Uh, we deliver uh, qualifications, New South Wales educational qualifications offshore in China. We organize study tours for groups um, on a commercial basis from China, from colleges and schools and uh, various organizations over there. Um, we have professional development activities, both for our own staff and for um, educators and management, um, educational manage managers uh, from China. And in the last couple of years, DEC has um, invested in an offshore representative, so we have uh, a director who's based in Shanghai in our Department of Trade and Industry there, but he's an education um, kind of specialist and representative of the department to further develop uh, business opportunities and provide intelligence uh, to us. 
just looking at some of the non-commercial activities that the department is engaged in, uh, probably these are more on the government school side. Um, we have many um, delegations constantly coming from China who we host and um, who we help, um, who are interested in, uh, I guess, educational curriculum, teaching and learning issues, and we help um, support that activity. Um, uh, we have many uh, schools in, in many regions of New South Wales um, have uh, sister school relationships with many schools in China. Uh, and under those relationships, a uh, considerable amount of student exchange at the school level is undertaken each year. Uh, we are also involved in the department in various language and uh, cultural learning support programs. Uh, for example, through the Confucius Institute system, the uh, Han Ba in China, which provides funding for um, students, for teachers to come and observe Chinese language teaching in New South Wales schools, and also provides funding for New South Wales government teachers to, to go and um, uh, improve their teaching and learning skills in, in China, in the Chinese language. Um, I won't talk too much about this. Uh, so China is, the, uh, apart from the national picture which I gave you before, uh, China is also for TAFE New South Wales and for government schools the largest source country of international students. In 2011 we had um, 2,700 almost international student enrollments uh, from China in our TAFE institutes and in schools and we were involved in a large number of um, projects, um, sister relationships, um, collaborative activities in China. Um, we have some outstanding students who uh, we have had from China. Uh, for example, in the schools area, um, each year for the last few years, um, we have been recognizing um, outstanding achievement amongst our international students. And students from China uh, have regularly featured in, in these uh, awards. Um, they, a very large proportion of our international students, including students from China, figure in the honor roll uh, from the um, New South Wales HSC each year. These are people who have achieved more than 90% in all their subjects in the HSC. And uh, there's a profile there of the most recent um, uh, such uh, ducks of the school. I think this year, only a few weeks ago, these uh, students are recognized in a ceremony attended by the governor. So on. Um, TAFE New South Wales also, of course, has uh, uh, good uh, examples of outstanding students. Um, and often, uh, I guess the three, the three main paths for our students in TAFE are many of them go on to university study. Some of them go, off, um, go back to um, China to take up positions and further study or employment over there. Uh, and many of them continue on to employment and uh, permanent residence in Australia. Uh, a bit more detail on our offshore delivery. Uh, TAFE New South Wales Institutes um, have been involved in delivering offshore programs uh, in China for a number of years. Um, so um, we deliver courses particularly in the, those areas, English language, accountancy, business, um, teacher training, tourism and hospitality. These programs are uh, delivered in a number of different provinces in China that are listed there for you. Um, uh, the, the colleges delivering these programs enroll um, varying numbers of students, uh, including, you know, some, some have uh, about 50 to 80 students in them, up to four or 500 students, depending on the location. So it's quite a large, um, thank you, um, it's quite a large um, uh, cohort of students who are being trained offshore in China by TAFE New South Wales. I guess unlike my private <laughs> Uh, college colleagues, we don't have this issue of the recognition that's due to the Chinese regulatory system. So TAFE qualifications are, are recognized in China. So we don't have, have that barrier that makes it a lot easier for us. Uh, basically, um, the benefits to China here are they're able to do uh, achieve the same qualification for a much lower cost while still living and working in their home country. Uh, they're able to improve their English language skills and we also help uh, train their teachers in uh, the Australian vet um, pedagogy, I guess. Um, and then finally, these, the pathway to further study, particularly to higher diplomas in TAFE 
and uh, to university degrees is open for these students who have qualified at the diploma level in China itself. Um, TAFE uh, and uh, government schools, the Department of Education, certainly looks forward to its next 40 years or longer of um, its relationship and engagement with China. Um, we are particularly, uh, I guess, in a strategic sense, uh, keen to build relationships. I think um, the term that was used by Frank that we should, um, I forget what it was, but <laughs> something about a more of a give and take relationship than a take relationship, basically. Uh, we are certainly keen to build more collaborations, uh, more partnerships with um, institutes and colleges in China. Uh, so that um, rather than people coming here for the whole of their studies, um, there's more articulation with Chinese institutions and uh, they get credit for studies that they have uh, done, um, say, in TAFE um, colleges um, back in their home country. Um, we are also moving uh, to some extent into training uh, the workforce uh, through corporate um, training programs and needs analyses of corporations in China and this is uh, some extent supported by the Austrade activities there. I know they're looking into um, seminars and events that uh, are able to uh, identify corporate training needs. Um, uh, we as mentioned the pathways for vet students and higher education before, and we are looking to build two-way exchange of educational expertise to build long-term friendships and cultural understanding. And, that, and those points, I guess, we hope will underpin our future engagements in, um, with China. I'd be happy to participate in the Q&A session after this, and I've been told I've run out of time, so thank you very much.